Hey everyone, welcome to another 360 in 360 where I'll try and cover a certain technology 360 degrees in about 360 seconds. And for this video, I actually want to dive into Azure NetApp Files or ANF. Now, the first thing about this, it's got NetApp in the name. And absolutely, this is using NetApp hardware. It's the all flash arrays using ONTAP. This is a Microsoft provided service. It's sold by, supported by Microsoft. And so I can think about, we have a region. And within that region, there's an amount of infrastructure. Now, part of this infrastructure is this NetApp hardware. So when you think about, it, we have this NetApp hardware that's gonna basically power Azure NetApp files. And this is, a first party resource, there's a resource provider for it. I can pull it through the portal, PowerShell, templates, CLI, uh, you kind of name it. This sits in Azure data centers. It's not on some separate data center. So it's Azure data centers, um, normal racks, and it exists in a certain region. And then you can think about me as the customer. Well, within a region, I have obviously subscriptions. Now subscription, can span multiple regions. But imagine I've got my kind of uh, subscription. And in that subscription, I can create one or more VNets. And the way this works is the way Azure NetApp Files interacts with my resources uses a delegated subnet. And this has been used by other services as well. It's where a certain subnet um, is dedicated for a particular service. Now it can be, I think, a, a slash 28, but a slash 27 is kind of recommended. So this is dedicated subnet. And what's gonna happen is Azure NetApp Files is gonna project into that subnet and I'll kind of have a NIC within that subnet that represents that instance of the service. So there's my Azure NetApp Files, it's projecting into my subnet. Now what's actually going on here is I create an Azure NetApp Files account. So just like I create a regular storage account for regular Azure storage with tables, blobs, etc., so too do I create a Azure NetApp Files storage account first. So from a hierarchy perspective within my subscription, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a, an Azure NetApp Files account. And I can have more than one of those within my Azure subscription. But again, it's tied to a particular subscription in a certain region. Now, under that Azure NetApp Files account, what I now create is one or more capacity pools. So under here, I create n number of capacity pools. Now that capacity pool has certain characteristics. I can think about it has a certain tier. And my tier could be kind of standard, premium, or ultra. And these really reflect to the megabytes per second throughput. So I can actually think about, well look, if it's standard, then I get 16 megabytes per second per terabyte that I provision. So I provision a certain capacity into this capacity pool. If it's premium, I get 64 megabytes per second per terabyte. If it's ultra, 128 megabytes per second per terabyte. So obviously if I have 100 terabyte volume, then I get 160 megabytes for standard. Um, it scales that way. So I have a tier, so it's one of these three. I pick, hey, I want this capacity pool to be standard or premium or ultra. And then I pick a capacity. And this is what I pay for. I pay for the capacity that I provision of this particular capacity pool. So my capacity, well that can be between four and 500 terabytes. So that's my capacity pool. That's what I'm paying for. Now within my capacity pool, I can create n number of volumes. So it's coming out of this capacity pool, a particular capacity pool that I've created, and then I have a volume. And my volume, once again, has characteristics. Once again, it has kind of a size, 
And I think my minimum size is 100 gigabytes, going up to 100 terabytes. So I have that size. Then I have a protocol. So now I pick, so I have one of these for my volume. So it's going to be NFS or SMB. I'm picking one of those things. So that's the hierarchy. Hey, I have an account, and I've had lots of accounts within my subscription. Within an account, I have a certain number of capacity pools. Then within each capacity pool, I have a number of volumes. So that's that flows down. And it's the volume I'm actually going to use. So it's through this, you can kind of imagine it's projected through into there. And now I create my virtual machines. So I have a certain VM and I connect using NFS or SMB. Now if it's NFS, it's version 3.x or 4.1. If it's SMB, then it's going to be 2.x or 3.1 or 3, sorry, 3. So they're the versions that I'm going to have for that communication. Now this is not encrypted today. Um, it's only accessible within the region, so it's kind of that, that private network space. However, if I have another VNet that's in the same region, I can peer them, and yes, this would be able to access it. But what I cannot do, it is not global peering. That will not work. I cannot do global peering and use this. Likewise, I could have kind of an on-premises, and that could be a site-to-site -site VPN, or I could have Express Route, and that could go through and leverage it as well. So I'm thinking about, hey, I, I can use those things. So that, that's kind of the basics around it. Now, this service, um, it is actually HANA certified, and that's a big deal. When I, I think about these enterprise workloads, that's really when I'm going to start using this service. I want that, that really high performance, I want that certification. This is a HANA certified solution. Another thing I did want to talk about is it does support proximity placement groups. That's where I can really try and get that close proximity between resources. I want that adjacency. So I could think about, I could actually create a proximity placement group. I would add the Azure NetApp files first, because obviously Azure NetApp files is not in every single data center in the region. So I want to make sure my proximity placement group gets created in a location that has Azure NetApp files. Then I would add my virtual machines. And if I have that very close proximity, it's actually possible to see sub millisecond latency. If I, if I get that, if I get that proximity between the VM and the Azure NetApp files. Um, I can do dynamic scaling of both the capacity here and the volume. So I can scale them both up and down. There's even a kind of auto scaling when I hit a certain size um, for the capacity pool. But in a nutshell, that's Azure NetApp files. It's going to show itself into my virtual network. I can use it from peered virtual networks in the same region. I can access it by site to site, my express route. At these three different tiers, again, throughput is based on the terabytes that are provisioned. I pay for that provision storage in my capacity pool. Today, there is no life cycle. It's not automatically going to move things between different capacity pools, the one that's standard to premium to ultra. Um, but I think there's some roadmap. There's also roadmap stuff about replicating to kind of paired regions. So I think there's lots of things on the way, encryption on the way. There's lots of things coming. Um, but that's where we are today. Great SMB and NFS service for those really enterprise workloads that want that really high performance um, enterprise kind of certification or super low latency. I hope that was useful. If it was, please subscribe, please share, please comment. Uh, I hope to see you on another video soon. Until then, take care.